Number 8. Lipansky Veer Strange stone sculptures found at an ancient site on the Danube continue to keep archaeologists guessing about who created them and why they have such bizarre features. Found at a Serbian settlement known as Lipinski Vir, the small stone heads were sculpted with haunting fish-like faces and no one has any idea who did them. Sculpted over 200 years ago, experts are trying to pinpoint why the faces have bulging eyes and strange turned-down mouths. The site was first inhabited by local hunters and gatherers who lived alongside farmers from the Near East who had migrated there over 12,000 years ago. Archaeologists who have been working at the site since the late 1960s have found a large number of treasures that were remarkably well-preserved. With permanent living arrangements, the location has been nicknamed the first city in Europe. But despite its advanced sense of organization, there aren't many clues about the statuettes. Carved from round sandstone cobbles found on the river banks, they are some of the oldest sculptures of the size ever found. So, were they supposed to represent the ancient locals? Or were they crafted to appease ancient deities? Experts think they could have been made as an offering to local river gods, though others think they may have been tributes to represent lost loved ones. What do you think about these bizarre carvings? Were they religious or simply a way to pay honor to the dead? After discovering a larger village and several smaller ones at Lepensky Veer, researchers concluded that various different cultures lived at the site over time. It will take more study to pinpoint the belief system held by its former inhabitants before experts can understand the appearance of these strange stone sculptures. Number 7. Acrocorinth Could a fountain in Greece have ties to mythological creatures? It just might, if you believe the legends that surround the Perini fountain in Corinth, an ancient city west of Athens. Acrocorinth was inhabited since the Neolithic age, and it was mentioned a number of times in Greek mythology. It's one of the most impressive fortresses in Greece, sitting on volcanic rock overlooking the sea. But the site isn't known only for its views. Multiple legends about how the fountain was created make the area a complete mystery. One of the stories says the nymph Perini cried so much after the death of her son that her tears created the fountain. Another legend says that the winged horse Pegasus struck his hoof on the ground to create the natural spring. Whatever you believe, the Acrocorinth became an important historical landmark. There's a courtyard, an open-air fountain, and an impressive system of water ducts, pumping basins and subterranean chambers to circulate the life-giving water underground. Later, beautiful marble columns and archways and a burial ground were added to the ancient fortified city. The site also has ties to an ancient cult, but experts aren't sure whether it was dedicated to Helios, the sun god, or to Apollo, who was the god of light. Either way, the Acrocorinth is a curious site with ties to legend and mythology, making it an important piece of Greece's history. Number 6. Centum Celis An imposing Roman tower overlooking the village of Colmiel de Torre in Portugal has kept visitors guessing about its purpose for centuries. Could the structure known as the Centum Celis, which means 100 cells, be where Saint Cornelia was imprisoned? It would have been easy to keep him captive there. The building was constructed from thick stone walls and was located away from the local communities to keep them safe. But why was it so different from the ruins found in Conimbriga, the largest Roman city in Portugal? And why have there been no similar structures found on the entire Iberian Peninsula? Excavations done at the end of the 20th century offered more clues and more questions about the building. Some thought it was a praetorium, the central part of a Roman camp. And when archaeologists found evidence that it was part of a much larger complex, they seemed to be onto something. But it wasn't a prison or even an inn for travelers. When the ruins of Sentencellas were excavated, the telltale signs of rooms, corridors, staircases, and cellars led experts to believe it once belonged to a wealthy Roman citizen named Lucius Caecilius, who made a fortune trading future to other nations. Even though only the tower remains, hidden under centuries of dust and debris. The outlines of the vast complex allowed researchers to once and for all declare its true origins. Would you like to visit this site? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. The Chabimura Reliefs There are several myths surrounding the mysterious and isolated Chabimura Reliefs in India. Hidden in the mountains of Tripura, the place is famous for its panels of rock carvings on the steep mountain wall on the bank of the Gomati River. 
But who is responsible for these strange carvings? Why are they there? The carvings include massive images of Shiva, Vishnu, Kartika, Mahishasura Mardini Durga, and other gods and goddesses, dating back to 15th to 16th centuries AD. The hill ranges are covered with lush vegetation and can only be reached by trekking through the thick jungle. So how is it possible that anyone was able to carve these panels on such steep rocky walls? Not far from the panels is a treacherous cave with its own mysterious past. Legend says that King Chichingfa hid a grand treasure inside, but locals warn visitors not to enter the cave system, believing the deity Chakrakma will inflict her wrath on anyone who trespasses. Maybe that's why one of the idols carved into the rock walls is of Chakrakma herself. Shown with ten hands and with snakes as her hair, she is a terrifying sight that is often visited and left with offerings of plants and flowers to appease her. Chabimura means mountain of pictures and stands 150 feet above the river. The precarious position on the steep walls of the gorge still pose more questions than answers. How were such intricate carvings done in such a remote location? Were they placed there for decoration or as a way to ward off evil? As beautiful and haunting as the surroundings, the rock panels are a memorable landmark hidden in the jungles of India. Number 4. Poverty Point Whoever lived at Poverty Point 3,000 years ago left no written records of what they did in their day-to-day -day lives. Archaeologists know that the site was a ceremonial center that was once home to hundreds, maybe even thousands of people, as well as an important trading hub unmatched by any in North America at that time. The site was once at the center of an important trade network. With the largest earthworks in the Western Hemisphere, experts were astonished with its construction. Multiple mounds of C-shaped ridges built by American Indians 3,400 years ago were unlike any other ancient sites found. Experts believe it was the first city in North America. Researchers have learned about these people by studying the materials they left behind, as well as what they didn't leave behind, such as burials and crop remains. So, how could one of the biggest ancient trade centers be such a success without growing crops or raising animals? That was the question archaeologists had upon discovering Poverty Point. Burial mounds were quite common throughout North America, yet the absence of human remains at Poverty Point suggests these handmade monumental earthworks were being used for other purposes. Poverty Point was built sometime between 1700 and 1100 BC. At this time, a lot was going on in the world. In Britain, Stonehenge was near completion. In Egypt, Queen Nefertiti and Pharaoh Tut ruled. The Shang Dynasty was thriving in China. The Olmec were rising to power in Mexico, and the oldest Hinduism's sacred book was being written in India. The question of why Poverty Point was abandoned remains unanswered. An American Indian group came along around 700 AD and reused a small portion of the site, but besides that, it remained abandoned until its rediscovery in the 1800s. Number 3. Kampalgar Wall most of us know about the Great Wall of China, but many also ignore a wall that stands just as tall in India. The wall surrounding the ancient fort of Kambalgar is one of the biggest secrets in all of India and quite possibly the entire world. The wall is believed to have been constructed almost 500 years ago at the same time the Kambalgar fort was built. It guards the massive fort containing over 300 ancient temples. The fort of Kambalgar extends an amazing length of just over 22 miles. The wall that surrounds it, which history buffs call the Great Wall of India, is speculated to be 50 miles long, making it India's longest fortification and the second longest wall worldwide, only behind China's. Construction on Kambalgar only began in the year 1443, nearly 50 years before Columbus sailed the Atlantic Ocean. It took over 100 years to build and in the 19th century, it was made even bigger. It was built high on a hill so it could observe and dominate the landscape from a distance. At its widest sections, the wall is about 50 feet thick and built with thousands of stone bricks and decorative flourishes. The wall has seven gateways altogether and it's believed that during the reign of Maharana, the wall held so many lamps that local farmers were able to work both day and night. When it was first being built, workers suffered massive failures, with the walls collapsing before construction could really get underway. 
The king, impatient for his wall to be built, consulted a priest who directed the king to seek out those who would voluntarily sacrifice themselves in the hopes of a more prosperous construction. As the chilling story goes, a hermit offered himself up, and he was soon ritually decapitated, and his head rolled down a hill. Where it landed was supposedly the best spot to build the wall. Whether the legend is true or not, the fortress still stands today. It was proudly pronounced a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2013 under the gathering hill forts of Rajasthan. However, despite its massive construction and beautiful architecture, not many people know about it. Number 2. Ritual Chambers of the Andes Not all cultures bury their dead underground. The ancient Egyptians used pyramids, and there are even modern burials today in the cemeteries of New Orleans that are above ground. The ancient people of southern Peru, who were known as the Kola tribe, built special tower-like tombs to bury their leaders. They dominated the region before the Incas, and they performed ritual ceremonies where they perfected their mummification techniques, burying their dead in stone towers. These cylindrical structures, called chulpas, stood 40 feet tall and were used to not only bury the ancient Inca nobles, but also their families and offerings to the gods. The chulpas were an important structure found across the high plains that allowed these ancient people to worship their ancestors. Each one had only a small opening in the stone structure facing toward the rising sun that was sealed after the dead were interred. At a site known as Sulustani, there are two different types of towers. One has smaller stone blocks, and the larger tower is made with carved stone blocks that fit together perfectly. Could this be an example of how the construction changed over time? Or could the Incas who later took over the area have adopted these rituals and kept the ancient funerary custom alive? Either way, the towers of Silistani are an important connection to an ancient culture, one that honored their nobility with these awe-inspiring tombs. Number 1. Golan Heights How did one of the most mysterious structures found in the Middle East, one of the oldest and largest structures in the region, go unnoticed for centuries? Does it have ties to biblical references of giants? Maybe, if its Hebrew name Gilgal Rephaim, which means Wheel of Giants, is to be believed. Experts estimate the strange structure is about 5,000 years old, making it older than Stonehenge. It's made up of five concentric circles that were built to protect a hidden burial chamber at its core. Instead of the massive stones used at Stonehenge, Golan Heights is made up of thousands of smaller rocks that, when piled together, weigh over 40,000 tons. Its largest circle is about 500 feet wide, but the way the structure was built, it is almost impossible to see from the ground, which is why it remained hidden for so long. It was first spotted by archaeologists studying an aerial survey of the area after the Syrian war in 1967. Once the haunting site was spotted, experts immediately worked to unravel the truth about Golan Heights. Some believe it may have been used for astrological rites after discovering that the sunrise lines up with openings in the rocks at the summer and winter solstices. At ground level, crumbling walls and overgrown weeds hide it from view, but from the air, the sprawling site is quite impressive. Items found at the location over time include pottery shards and flint tools that date the site to around 3500 BC, but newer parts were added to the structure over the next 2000 years. Nowadays, it's used for military training by the Israelis, but visitors can still explore the area, including the 20-foot-long burial chamber, and see for themselves the wonder of the structure. Could the prehistoric monument really be some sort of astronomical calendar for giants? Let us know what you think Golan Heights was built for in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Which one of these archaeological places did you find the most unique? Have you heard about any of the sites before? Let us know in the comments section down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.